from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE, covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here. Day three of wall-to-wall -wall coverage at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con 2018 here in Seattle. The Cube's been breaking it down all week. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. Our next guest is Tuan Nguyen, who's the principal engineer in technical marketing, cloud products and solutions at Cisco Systems. Tuan, welcome to the Cube. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So obviously, cloud has been a big part of Cisco. We've seen um, at Cisco Live last year in Cisco Barcelona. Yep. Got your a big European event coming up, Cisco Live in Europe. Yes. Cloud has been a big part of the, the, the CEO's um, conversations on stage. Yes. Cisco's going all in on cloud. DevNet, yeah. DevNet Create, two communities. You guys got a cloud native vibe going on at Cisco. Yep. Cloud we, we Center, do. you got some products that are addressing this. Right. This is a, a, a shift for Cisco, big yeah. time. Yeah. Not, you've been in the cloud, but this is like all, it seems, feels like an all in. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, so uh, you know, what we've been uh, evangelizing to people here is that Cisco is a software company, right? Uh, we, we certainly have a, a very strong heritage in our enterprise relationships uh, related to our hardware platforms, but we're, uh, we're transitioning and we're really making uh, that conversion to being a software company. Uh, Cisco has been uh, acquiring uh, talent and technology uh, in the past couple of years. We've developed some strong relationships with Google and uh, AWS as well and uh, we, we develop these reference architectures that our customers can buy as kind of a single unit uh, and uh, get the support that they need from us. Yeah. So well, We covered your uh, recent announcement with AWS. Yes. Really nice, elegantly designed Kubernetes strategy where using right. EKS over here, you got yeah. the Cisco stuff on here, so it's a seamless experience for the customer, which is great. I think that's a great announcement. I think it's directionally correct. I think that's what customers want. But I want to ask you a, a bigger question. I want to get your, um, your, your opinion on perspective. When you look at Kubernetes, what we're hearing here at the show from end users and from the uh, emerging startups that are contributing is that breaking down the monolithic application into yeah. a series of, of, of granular sets of services is what everyone's doing. Yeah. And that's clearly, it's microservices, a variety of other things, Kubernetes can connect that, but it's, it's the network that brings it together. Right. So we're seeing the, the policy knobs inside Kubernetes as being a very strategic benefit. We had one expert say, a lot of people aren't taking advantage of those policy knobs. It's a great right. opportunity. Right. You guys are <laughs> as networked as you could be. It's Cisco. Right. This is your, this is right. your DNA. Yeah. How are you guys looking at Kubernetes? Are you looking at the policy knobs? How do you talk to your customers about this new opportunity with Kubernetes? How, yeah. What's the real upside yeah. for the, the, your customers with Kubernetes? Yeah, so, so one, uh, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, we, we see Kubernetes as very pervasive, so uh, we offer an on-prem version of Kubernetes, uh, and of course, you know, we partner with Google and with uh, AWS to deliver uh, on-cloud versions of Kubernetes. And uh, related to policies, application policies in the form of Istio, and uh, network policies or security policies in the form of a network interface. Um, our on-prem solution offers three types of CNIs, uh, so we're very flexible in that way, and certainly if you are a Cisco customer and you have a Cisco ecosystem of hardware platforms, then we natively integrate into those platforms and we, we let you leverage your existing investments. Yeah. So if I look at it that way then I'm saying okay, I'm good with Cisco right now. Yep. Do I have to change anything with Kubernetes? What's the impact to me as a Cisco customer? Is yep. it just added value, consistent environment? What's the, what's the impact to the customer's day-to-day, -day operational sure, <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, yeah. environment? Yeah, so, so our customers are asking us uh, to tie both VM-based and container-based workloads into CICD. So uh, we obviously, with uh, our, CI, uh, our ACI CNI, uh, we give them the capability to uh, construct uh, policies in Kubernetes that end up on the hardware platform, right? That's number one. Uh, and then we also have a harbor registry, we have security policies uh, that can be carried across different uh, platforms. So in your private cloud, in VMware and OpenStack, uh, you can carry those same policies. And for us, um, we've got application delivery uh, frameworks and platforms that deliver the application 
so in the form of uh, both um, VM and container-based as well as uh, bare metal. Uh, and we uh, kind of unify the user experience uh, when it comes to application deployment in yeah. Kubernetes. So, Tuan, I'm actually I'm glad that we got you towards the, the end of what we've been talking about here. Because yeah. one, one of the things we've been teasing apart is Multi-clouds in many ways is like what we've been talking about a long time about multi-vendor. Yeah. And the networking space is an area that we really understand You know what worked and what didn't work and in, in a multi-vendor world and the management piece was often you know, the, the breaking point uh, because you just uh, stitching all those together, uh, you know, we, we've looked the last few years, customers have multi-cloud and getting their arms around that and how do I manage that it, it, you know, can be a real challenge. Yeah. So yeah. You know, we know Cisco's making investments, they've made acquisitions. Tell, tell us, what have we learned from the past? What's different about this now that will make it successful where you know, management has been you know, one of the pitfalls for you know, quite a long time? Yeah, yeah. So, so I think what we've learned from the past is that uh, customers are asking us for uh, policies that can span across the multi-cloud, right? So, uh, whereas uh, certain platforms will give you a hybrid cloud experience, uh, Cisco is uh, investing in uh, things like um, you know, uh, uh, VPN mesh topologies in the uh, CSR, uh, in uh, ASR, uh, in um, you know, protecting workloads as they move across uh, different cloud uh, targets. Uh, and then also um, in the uh, provisioning and, and uh, life cycle management, um, we feel that uh, customers want the capability to run applications uh, in any cloud uh, environment and uh, under any type of overlay or underlay uh, networking uh, platform. Yeah. Yeah, Tuan, one of the things that, you know, to talk about not only getting your arms around it, but th there's multiple accesses that I need to optimize for. Uh, one of the ones, of course, sorting out is, is, is cost. So, you know, where does Cisco sit in this environment? Um, you know, the, the big shift that, that I think was really highlighted for me last year going to Cisco Live is it used to be most of what I'm managing, I control. Right. Today, most of the network and most of the environments that I'm in charge of, they're, they're outside of my purview right. in that multi-cloud world. Right. So, so right. how do I make sure that I don't you know, get myself in trouble with a CFO right. or you know, get, have unexpected things come up? Right, right, yeah. So, so uh, I came through a uh, software acquisition called Clicker Technologies, and Clicker Technologies uh, is that one tool uh, that gives you that experience uh, and, and allows you to see cloud costs. So cloud costs from a uh, hourly metered perspective, but also from a budgeting perspective. And uh, we're adding uh, additional components into our uh, platform uh, that gives you like true uh, costs for all of your compute, all of your network, uh, your storage, uh, your services like Lambda, uh, and then also makes recommendations on the instant sizes that you need to use. Uh, we have policies like suspension policies that help our customers to save on their cloud bill. Uh, and um, in a lot of ways, the lifecycle management aspect of applications is something that uh, differentiates us from other uh, cloud management platforms. Talk about the cost side and the cost of ownership. I've always been talking about the cloud as a, the TCO or total cost of ownership changes a bit. What are some of the challenges that you've seen the customers are having that you guys are helping with? When you look at the integrating, um, security, networking, and application performance and management, because it's not siloed anymore. This, yeah. They're integrating together. That's right. That's this, right. Is, this is a new dynamic. Right, right. What's state of the art? What are you guys doing? Do you guys address that? What are some of the customer challenges? And just, what's your thoughts in that area? Yeah, so most, most of the time, uh, there, there are two, two basic challenges to this. One is uh, you know, bringing the cloud economy into the private cloud consumption. Uh, is something that our platform does. Uh, and then also uh, being able to visualize all the costs, uh, helping our customers to make good decisions about uh, what types of uh, workloads run where best, uh, and uh, whether you know, uh, it's, uh, so we enable obviously VMs as well as uh, cloud native uh, container-based uh, microservices to coexist in a single uh, platform, so we, we'll deploy VMs and containers in a, in a hybrid fashion, or we'll yep. deploy them into the same, and we'll give you the utilization of those workloads. 
based on uh, dollar amounts, uh, based on runtime, and also based on the type of workload. So here's the curveball question for you. Now yep. multi-cloud comes into the equation. Yep. How do you guys deal with that? Because workload, sorry, have to, some, in some cases, right. I've heard from customers that refactoring those workloads is a problem. Right. So if I'm going to run true multi-cloud, I'm right. going to have multiple clouds, I need networks to be, to know, have smarts around you know, where I want to put that and so I want to run it in different geography maybe or region. So the network has the intelligence on a lot of things. Right. Right. How are you guys addressing the multi-cloud component yeah. with yeah. workload without refactoring? Yeah, so, so because uh, we can compose applications that consist of both VMs and containers, right? Uh, one of the, the uh, projects, or just one of the use cases that we worked on with our uh, relationship with Google was uh, to, from Cloud Center, to deploy cloud-native workloads uh, in GKE uh, that would uh, navigate and, and basically uh, traverse the VPN um, network to go back into the on-prem um, uh, on uh, 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 target in order to access a database that was uh, kind of a legacy database using an API uh, URL. Uh, so that whole workflow was something that we uh, solved for with our reference architecture. So you know, we, we obviously have the uh, portfolio uh, of products uh, that allows our customers uh, to take advantage of both hardware, software, and networking and security and monitoring all in one uh, reference architecture. A lot of opportunities for you guys. I think you're uh, positioned well. We've covered you guys on the DevNet, DevNet Create. Yeah. You're seeing the cloud center, this dashboard kind of model of looking at the operation side, the development side, a lot of changes really kind of fit right into your wheelhouse. So yes. you know, yeah. I think the Kubernetes policy knobs is a big story that I'm walking away with on this trip is saying, wow, policy sounds like a networking thing. And people, yeah. Networking guys love policy. Yeah. We can automate it. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and manage the costs. Yeah. It's a good thing. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for coming on, appreciate yeah. your insight. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you very Cube much. Cube coverage here, day three continues. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. Stay with us for wall-to-wall -wall coverage here at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon. We'll be right back with more after this short break. I remember.